Yeah, what do you want? You want another war story, huh? You want to hear about some other world getting wasted, eh? I knew you were the type. Your stagnant republic has never seen some of the strange creatures and races we fought on the Outer Rim in those years. <laughs> and you never will now. If a world isn't strong enough to defend itself, it's basically forfeit. But this story is about something a little different. We were going through the asteroid fields of the Crispin system at the very edge of the galaxy, playing with the pirates and smugglers we found there. The main belt in the Crispin system consists of mainly small rocks covered in frozen methane gas shells, and the pirates were using them for cover. Ha! <laughs> I remember using a thermal generator to cause the outer layer of one of the asteroids to vaporize in a picosecond. It blew out and shredded the three smugglers using it for cover. But that was a mistake. The asteroid I had targeted was smaller than most, maybe a dozen meters on a side. On the outside, it looked the same as any other, just a ball covered in frozen gas. But something must have been inside it, something inactive in the cold. The heat of my blast might have triggered something or woken something up. After I'd hit it, spots of light and heat appeared all over the thin shell, still covering it, evaporating the gases. What lay underneath looked like some sort of rocky growth. A deformed rock, pitted by scores of micrometeorite scars. I think something even older might have been inside that. Maybe, but maybe not. It started rotating faster and faster as we watched it. After a second, it started spraying fire, thermal projectiles that melted our armor like wax. We were caught completely by surprise. Before we could counterattack, it fled at an incredible speed. We couldn't catch it, but we could follow its hyperspace wake. We followed its trail as far as we could, heading away from the galactic core. When it finally led beyond the edge of our galaxy, we abandoned our efforts. Anything that wants to commit suicide in that great void is not worth our trouble trying to catch. Uh, that's the only story I have for now. I'll tell you some more stuff later if we get the chance. Is there something else you want to know? It has big trees, in case your eyes don't work anymore. But I do know that there is one exceptional race on this world. The Wookiees. The Wookiees, although primitive compared to us, are surprisingly capable warriors. They're strong and pick up combat techniques pretty quickly. I think they're more than a match for the average Republic or Sith trooper. When we were looking for targets, we considered this world carefully. We were wondering if we'd have to use larger weapons than our war droids if we wanted to clear the damn forest so we could fight in the open. Too many trees means they can go into hiding too easy. And what's a continent or two turned to glass if we get the whole world after? Do you have anything else you want to ask? <laughs> stimulants make a warrior out of even the weakest human. Here's a speed-boosting stimulant to help you get quicker. There anything else you need? Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. Affirmative. If you believe your skills are up to the task, Master, then I can certainly guide you through the process. Request. I only ask that you be oh so very careful, Master. I am too valuable and well-crafted to perish at the hands of ineptitude. Negatory. Uh, no, Master. You are not a droid, however, and therefore your skills are limited by the physical capabilities of your meatbag extremities, or some such. As you desire, Master. I cannot help but claim a small amount of relief. Signing off. Got something on your mind, do you? Oh, I know plenty about Kashik. He 
You think someone doesn't live here for 20 years and pick up a thing or two? Chances are, by the time I finish telling you about it all, you would have found out for yourself. So there's no reason for me to start blathering on. It should be enough for me to tell you that there's kilometer after kilometer of trees on this planet. The deeper you go, the more dangerous it gets. If you're smart, you stay on top with the Wookiees. You go deep, however, and you may find some things you weren't expecting. And that's about all I got to say about that. Now, let's get going. Oh, I get it. Let's play with the old man's head, is it? He's half senile. He'll forget I said anything. Wait, uh, what was this about anyway? How may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? What is it you would like to speak to me about? Well, I suppose I have not talked very much about the Jedi I met back home. They, all of them, were so very invigorating. They were so very alive, so full of hope and energy and zeal in retrospect. I can see it was a little bit tragic. Well, yes. These Jedi were going to fight the Mandalorians just after they had invaded. Many of those Jedi perished in the fighting. But to us, they seemed invincible. Especially their leader, who they talked about all the time. Paragons of light and justice sweeping away all iniquity before them. It was like looking at gods. I know that. I was using poetic license. But those Jedi, they were enthralling. Everyone wanted just to touch them. Some people thought it would bring them luck. Not that the peace they brought lasted very long. The Jedi left. The people grew complacent. Those who had been wronged saw their chance at revenge. And so the cycle continues. The oppressed become the new generation of oppressors. The human oppressed, that is. The non-humans were never treated well in any case. We felt the brunt of both administrations. Of course it was. They took their frustrations and hate out on us, because the people they wanted had already fled or were too well protected. But no one looks out for the injustices we suffered. Oh no, but... But I am sorry. I should not have outbursts like that. Don't you see? The very fact I mentioned it means it has its influence. Anger can lead to the dark side, and I must be ever careful that I do not fall back into those ways. I... I thank you for your support. My outburst was uncalled for, but you did not lash back at me. You are a much better Jedi than I would seem. But let us not speak more of this now. We should continue on our journey. Perhaps later we will talk again. How can I help? I do. I've been watching you, studying you closely to see what kind of progress you've made since your training at the hands of Master Zah. I've seen how you've resisted many temptations and continued to walk the path of the light side. Very commendable, but I'm afraid you might stray from this path. You need to see what the dark side represents in its entirety, for it is what we battle. Only the wisdom of a Jedi Master can truly explain this, but I will do my best to make you understand. The dark side is not simply giving in to anger, a temptation, or to use the force to destructive ends. These things only lead to the dark side. The dark side grows stronger and more insidious the closer you draw to it. It begs you to surrender to it, to release all its terrible power, and it becomes harder and harder to resist. And once you stop resisting, it's too late. It twists you up inside and turns you into a mockery of everything you once stood for. I am no less resistant to temptation than any other. I simply have the benefit of training that you do not. But even the training of the Jedi might not be enough to save us. We need only to look at the atrocities which have been committed by those under its sway to understand the terrible, corrupting evil of the Dark Side. 
Millions dead, and far more suffering. What sort of person would you have to become to perform such deeds gladly? And that is why the dark side is so insidious. If you are not careful, you do not even see each small step you take towards it until it's too late. It's so easy to think that we would never fall prey to such a horror, that we have unlimited control, vigilance, and foresight. If only that were true. The Sith have become powerful because there are many Jedi who've succumbed to the lure of the dark side and joined their cause. What greater weapon is there than to turn an enemy to your cause, to use their own knowledge against them? We are weakened while they are strengthened, so we must harden our hearts and do whatever is required to fight against the dark side, even when the battle becomes wearying. I don't know. The vision of our future is clouded by shadows cast from the dark side. But I sense something ominous lurking in those shadows. But words alone cannot save one from the dark side. Come, we should continue with the task at hand. When the time comes, I only hope we are all strong enough to do what we must. Yes, what's on your mind? I already told you, he betrayed us all. Well, there, there is more to it. I'm, I'm sure you don't want to hear about it. It's just that I don't talk about it very much, okay? I told you about my homeworld, Telos. Four years ago, Saul led the Sith fleet there and demanded its surrender. The planet refused, and Saul proceeded to devastate its entire surface. Millions died. I had a, a, a wife and a son on Telos. I thought they would be safe there, but my task force arrived too late to be of much help. We, we didn't have enough medical supplies. The colony was, was burning and the dying were everywhere. I remember holding my wife and screaming for the medics, but th they didn't come in time. Of course not, how could you? I've, I, mean, I had nothing left after that, really. I, I devoted myself to the fleet. Hunting Saul was my only purpose. I, I miss them, and I know killing Saul won't bring them back. And, I, and it won't make me happy again, but I, I have to do it. I don't expect you to understand, but I have to pay him back for what he's done. I have to. It's all I have left. She had courage, and she was stubborn. <laughs> a little bit like you in that respect. Never talk her out of anything once you put her mind to it. And she hated it when I signed back onto the fleet at the start of the war. I had planned on, on leaving soon, to join her. His name was Dustal, and I don't know what happened to him. The colony was a complete ruin, and we never found any trace of him. I made inquiries and followed the reports from Telos for years, but I stopped. Anyway, that's the story, for what it's worth. I've, uh, never talked about it before to anyone. I suppose it's time I finally did. do for you. Look, I'm happy Griff's alive, but I'm mad at him right now. And I don't know what kind of job he's got for you, but I don't trust him. It's probably just another scam. So, is there anything else you need? Well, I know Zalbar's from Kashik, but he never liked to talk about it. He wouldn't even tell me why he left. I don't think the Wookiees like outsiders much. Sorry I can't be more help, you know. Is there anything else I can do for you? Okay, have it your way. 